Why do Great Lakes ships look so different than ocean-going ships if they carry the same things? I'll break it down into five things. If you were to look into the year a bulk carrier on the Great Lakes was built, many of them would be over 40 years old. One Great Lakes vessel is even 82 years old, that being the cement carrier Alpina. So why are these ships still operating if they are so old? Well, it's simple. Fresh water. Vessels that sail in the ocean are constantly getting salts on their hulls, which rust the ship. It's the same premise with a car. In the winter, salt gets on the body, and the car rusts as a result. So because of rust, and some other things, many ocean-going freighters are sent to the scrapyard after 10 to 20 years. Since Great Lakes freighters sail in fresh water, salt getting on the hull is not an issue, so many of these freighters can sail for decades without any major issues with the hull. In fact, the St. Mary's Challenger sailed on the lakes for 106 years as it was built in 1906 and eventually was converted for use as a barge in 2012. So the hull of the St. Mary's Challenger is still being used on the lakes after more than a century. But what does all of this have to do with difference in appearance? Well, since many of these ships are older, their design is different. Of course. This is because older ships were built and designed in accordance to whatever was considered to be the most efficient at the time. As years pass and new things are discovered, changes are made and that becomes more evident in ocean-going freighters as new vessels are always being built to replace ships that are 10 to 20 years old and being scrapped. Although some ships on the lakes are very old, they are constantly being retrofitted with newer technologies to keep them competitive. Well, there's more to it than you think. Many ships on the lakes, well, mostly older vessels, or what boat nerds know as the classic lake freighters, were built to not only serve their purpose of transporting bulk cargoes on the lakes, but also to look good. I mean, look at that ship. Man, it's gorgeous. Classic lake freighters are vessels that are built with two separate superstructures, one at the bow and one at the stern. The pallet house would be at the bow with the engine and, of course, the smokestack being at the stern. Eventually, in the late 70s and beyond, ships on the lakes were built with just one superstructure in the stern, as this was cheaper since less plumbing was needed and it was easier for the crew members since they didn't have to walk to the other side of the vessel. Anyways, these classic lake freighters were built to look elegant when they sailed on the water, and many shipping companies would take pride in the looks of their ships. On the ocean, this was never really a big deal, at least when it came to bulk carriers. <laughs> yeah, ocean liners are a different story. This is most likely because of the size of the ocean and the number of ships that were sailing. Since companies on the lakes were less in number, and the fleets on the lakes were less in number, competing for the best design as a side project, <laughs> was more prominent as the ships were seen by each other more often. Sadly, in the lakes, this practice seems to be dying, since the newer vessels look cookie-cutter. Although even these ships look different than their ocean-going counterparts. Waves on the ocean get larger than waves on the lakes of course, and yes, this does impact design. Since waves in the lakes don't get as large, lake freighters can be built with narrower dimensions. Ocean vessels or salties have a 7 to 1 length to width ratio, whereas Great Lakes freighters have a 10 to 1 length to width ratio, which means that for every 7 feet in length there is a width of 1, and for Great Lakes freighters, for every 10 feet in length there is a width of 1. Although some salties have cell phone loaders, the majority don't. On the Great Lakes, the majority of them do. For those who don't know, cell phone loaders are a conveyor system on a vessel in which bulk cargo on the vessel drops, typically from a sloped cargo hold 
onto conveyor belts, where the cargo is eventually sandwiched between two conveyor belts, which lifts it up and then drops it onto the crane-like unloader on deck and onto the dock. Self unloaders definitely add a look to a vessel and differentiate from the flat decks of many salties. I did do a video on self unloaders, if anyone's curious. <laughs> Well, there is more to this than just waves. The Great Lakes are smaller bodies of water than the ocean is, and in addition to that, the ocean is salt water and the lakes are fresh water, like I said before. Salties will often have what's called a bulbous bow, which is literally a bubble at the bow that is meant to reduce drag on the ship when sailing. It does this by disrupting the wave that is created when sailing at high speeds. To add perspective, a vessel with the tapered bow has a wave at the stem. That wave puts resistance on the vessel, meaning more engine power is needed and results in wasted money. A bulbous bow disrupts this wave, resulting in less drag and more energy efficient sailing. On the Great Lakes, only few of them have them. Most Lakers are built with a cylindrical bow, although older vessels still feature the elegant tapered bow. <laughs> Cylindrical bows became popular on the lakes after some testing proved that it had less resistance than a tapered bow. The first ship to use the cylindrical bow was the 1972-built J.W. McGiffin, which sails today as a CSL Niagara. Even though both bulk carriers on the ocean and on the Great Lakes carry much of the same cargoes, they look different. This is summed up in five reasons that I will reinstate. The age difference in the ships, as many Great Lakes freighters are decades older. The difference in design, because of age and different conditions. Size requirements, the 10 to 1 ratio for Great Lakes freighters and the 7 to 1 ratio for ocean going. Cell phone loaders being mostly found in the lakes. And the body of water they sail on. Overall, though, the binding reason is just really a difference of needs. In order for lake freighters to make the most money, they are going to have whatever design and device to do that. Whatever design and devices an ocean-going freighter needs to be most profitable, it will have. Of course, as always, though, business is business. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, subscribe for more shipping information videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>